Uh, this has five joysticks. It's a four-player console, but I also have the four-way joystick for the older games like Pac-Man or Dig Dug, where back in those days they didn't have diagonal. It was just up, down, left, and right. So if you play these games today on an eight-way joystick where there's diagonal, Pac-Man doesn't know which way to go. If you go down and to the right, it doesn't know right or down. So it, it messes up these old games that only had four uh, directions. Uh, so a four-way joystick uh, takes the diagonals out and uh, are better for that. You guys can see the big one I did, and I've got all my videos on how I put this one together, the big one. Uh, but since this one's going to be different from that, I thought it would make sense to do another one. And uh, this system used an iPack Mini. It used two iPack Minis to control the buttons. So one controlled players one and three, the other iPack Mini controlled players two and four. Uh, this one is using an iPack 4 though, uh, which is very different from an iPack Mini. An iPack Mini is nice because it has its own wiring harness. You just plug it into the iPack and then you connect it to all the buttons and joysticks. An iPack 4 doesn't have a wiring harness, so you actually have to cut your own wire, crimp a little uh, end on it to connect to the button, and um, connect the other end to the iPack itself. So it's a very different process, so it makes sense to do a video for this one too. So go ahead and lift this up here. Uh, so this uh, arcade console is from Game Room Solutions, also similar to that one. Um, it's got the four-player joysticks plus the uh, one four-way joystick here. And right now, I haven't plugged in any buttons. I've just connected a couple of the joysticks. Um, I'm going to be running this on a Raspberry Pi, uh, whereas the big cabinet runs on an actual full uh, PC computer. I went ahead and attached the iPack here using these little PCB feet. Uh, you can get them online. Uh, my other video shows kind of how that looks and installing it, connecting it. So I already got it hanging up here. The diagram I was using for these Sanwa joysticks that tells you what um, direction each wire is, up, down, left, or right, uh, just didn't seem like the one I found online was correct. It said up and down were these colors here, but it ended up being swapped. So I thought I'd start with the joysticks because that's going to be trickier than the buttons. And this four-way joystick came with a, a cable here that had a female end on both ends. So obviously that's not a little square like this is not going to connect to an iPad 4. So I had to cut off the one on this end. I went online to see which one was the ground wire and I found a website that said if it's oriented this way, it should be the top wire as your ground wire. So I'm assuming that's right. We'll see when I get to testing. Uh, and I had to splice um, a wire onto it so it would reach the iPack 4 and I'll kind of show how that works. Alright, so we'll start with this one here, uh, the four-way joystick. Now this is a little tricky, right? It's like if these four joysticks are filling the spots for one, two, three, and four, how are you supposed to connect this to the iPack? Well, you're, all, you're never going to use player one the eight-way player one joystick and the four-way player one joystick. You'll pick which one you're using depending on the game you're playing. So you can actually just connect them into the same slot on here. To do this project, you're going to need something to strip the wires, which is uh, the stripper here. And, and this is going to be a crimper, uh, which you're going to use to put the little uh, ends on it, right? You're going to have to tighten these on the end of the wire. That's what the crimper is for, but this will be later. Right now, I'm just going to do the extensions on this. Uh, and add these wires to the ends, okay? So I've already done that with the ground wire, and now I'm gonna do the same thing here. You take your stripper, you put it at the end, the wire, kind of strip off the end of it here, and expose the wire there. And then I'll pick, uh, let's do orange for this one. And we're going to strip off the end of that one as well. Okay, that exposes the wire there. Give it a little, actually, no, we don't want to twist it. We want to leave, let it kind of fan out. Uh, so now we've got these two um, parts of the wire sticking out, and we're just going to twist them together to make it one wire. So we're just going to put these through each other and try and twist them around. 
one another. And there we go. Like that. Okay, so it kind of makes it one wire. Take one of the tips and you're just going to put a cap on it, which is going to kind of hold these wires, making them one wire. So you just put it on the top and just twist it on and keep twisting until it doesn't really twist anymore. There we go. Like that. You get it on there. And now those two are one wire. Okay, so now I've got an a orange wire. Don't know what it does yet. I'm going to have to test it out and see. We're going to do the same thing with the next wire. All right, so now they're all connected. I've got the black ground wire. I hope is the ground wire at least. And these other ones now will reach to the player one section also on here. And uh, I'm going to unplug this one here for player one because I know those are right. Uh, and then I'm going to plug this one in. I'm then going to test it on the Raspberry Pi and figure out which color goes with which direction. Okay, so you're going to need a small screwdriver to get in. Basically how this works is you loosen the connection. This little screw is what holds the wire in there, right? So you can loosen it that way and just take it right out. Um, and then you put the new one in and you just tighten it and that's what secures the wire into the iPack. All right, so we're going to connect this black wire here to the and we're just gonna drop it into there's two ground slots on this one so let's put it here in the first one just drop it right in there and then you tighten it up just like so and it's nice and secure okay so we've got the ground in there and as I said I don't know what these other ones do but they are gonna be player one and on here, you've got player one down, up, left, and right. So I'll just drop them in there, and then we'll see what they actually do when I plug it in the computer. Uh, so let's get the computer, and we'll test it out. Um, but this right here is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's just basically a little mini PC computer. Um, it doesn't run Windows. It has its own little operating system. I think this is a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, but it's got your USB ports for this. That's what the uh, iPack 4 will plug into. Uh, it's got an HDMI output to connect to the TV. And it's got a little power connection there. And it basically, you get a little uh, mini data card. Uh, and that's what you save all of your games and everything onto. And you just slide it right in there. I know I got a lot of glare here, so hopefully it comes through. Um, but you save it. This has, I think, a 128 card, and all the games and everything are saved on that. You just slide it in there, and that's what the Raspberry Pi reads. Uh, so you just save the game. And there's websites that explain Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I'm going to plug the power in to this. And what's nice about this Raspberry Pi is it has a little button for on and off right here on the cord itself, which is kind of cool to turn it, to turn it on. So let's put the power cord in. There we go. Right there, a little mini USB. Uh, let's grab my HDMI here. I'm going to plug that into the HDMI so it displays on the TV. And I need to plug the uh, iPack 4 into this. So the iPack 4 here uses uh, this um, mini USB uh, as its power and its signal. Uh, so it doesn't need, need a separate power source. It's all powered and runs the data through that same cord. Uh, and it's just got a USB connection at the end. And that's how your computer, your Raspberry Pi, whatever your device is, is going to recognize that. It's just through the, the USB connection. And I've got these little holes back here to send it through. Grab that. And uh, that's just going to go right into the Raspberry Pi. Now, right now, I have plugged in this four-way joystick, okay? 
So let's turn this thing on. And hopefully, you have to, unfortunately, on the Raspberry Pi, you have to wait for these little intro videos that are that I have installed on here. You can't skip them, as far as I know. Put in the comments if you know how to skip it. Um, but then it'll go into the... Uh, this runs Emulation Station. That's the software that organizes and uh, runs all the games. It's called a front end. Um, the large cabinet I have has a Hyperspin as the front end. This one uses Emulation Station, which is a much smaller program and is better for smaller devices that don't have a lot of CPU power. Emulation Station is just a very simple, uh, easy on the system kind of program front end. In theory, I should be able to move the joystick up, down, left, and right if I plugged it in correctly. So I'm going to move this four-way joystick and see what happens. I'm going to push up, and it went down. So already good news, it detected the joystick, uh, which means those spliced connections I did must be working. Otherwise, it wouldn't have even detected that movement right there. Uh, and now that I know my splice is working, it's detecting the joystick, I just pressed up and it went down. So actually I decided to try this differently to simplify it. Having all four cords plugged in at once was too confusing. I know red was up and that was working fine, so I unplugged the other ones. And I'm just going to go one at a time to find which is the correct one. Uh, so I've got orange and down right now, and let's see if that works. So I know up works. Down does not work. So let's try the yellow one for down, and let's see if that works. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, so it looks like yellow is down. Okay, so I'm using my controller here. I'm going to go into this and down and up are working. But let's see what is left and what is right. Okay, let's try orange for left. Yep, that worked, but I don't have right, so I got lucky there, which means that green must be right. Okay, so now I think I've got this four-way joystick working, ta-da! So I got down, up, left, and right.